You know, I think we talk about color grading in an overly systematic way. Always look at the scopes, get your white point here, your black point here. This is the right exposure and the right white balance. Never clip the highlights, never crush the shadows. Get your skin tones right here. And most importantly, do as little as possible and never overdo it. Now, there's actually a lot of good advice in there and it's important to do certain things a certain way, but I want this video to be focused on the fun and creative side of color. That's why instead of filming this video at home like normal, I decided to come film it in the mountains as a reminder that you can have fun and experiment with this craft. But that being said, Hopefully the birds aren't a little too loud. Hopefully the light will get nice behind us as the sun rises and let's dive into some creative color grading tricks. First up, let's talk about day for night. And this is a classic filmmaking trick, taking footage shot during the day and making it look like it was shot at night. Super simple, just start out by reducing the exposure and using the temperature sliders to add in some blue and maybe even purple to the temperature of the shot. And you can also try darkening the highlights a little bit to mimic that lack of contrast that you would get from moonlight. This next one isn't really as much of a creative trick as it is just a quick tip that I thought you should know, and that's to try completely desaturating the purples in your image to get rid of nasty artifacts in the gray parts of the shot. A lot of the time, if you have gray areas in your shot, they'll end up kind of blue and purple. And a lot of the artifacts in your footage will hang out in those blue and purple areas. So if you have a lot of them in the shot, try just taking that purple part of the hue slider and just dragging it down to desaturate it. And you might be surprised by the results. Next up, let's talk about a technique I use all the time to add some extra definition and contrast to my shots. And I don't know exactly what it's called, but I would call it kind of the reverse HSL secondary technique. HSL secondary is a tool in Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro that allows you to select a range of colors and apply adjustments just to those colors. I made a separate video all about it, which you can watch by clicking right up here. But what a lot of people don't even realize or consider is that you can invert that effect and select a range of colors and then apply adjustments to everything else. So basically the way I use this is I first select my skin tones using HSL secondary and make any adjustments to them, and then I duplicate that HSL secondary effect, invert it, reset all the effects, and then use the color wheels to push a little bit of blue and green into the midtones. And this adds a cooler cast to everything except the skin tones. It's probably something I'm gonna do on this shot. This is a really cool technique, especially if you're going for a very moody look, but also just if you wanna add some extra contrast to your shot by creating some contrast between the skin tones and everything else. Next up, I wanna to talk to you about a few ways you can creatively use gradients and masks in your grading. But before we jump into that, I wanna take a quick second to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is ArtGrid. ArtGrid is a massive library of amazing footage shot by filmmakers spanning the globe with new material added daily as more and more filmmakers join the community. Their single license allows you to use any of their footage for any project. It covers commercial use and your client's use of the footage and there are no limitations on the number of views or the size of audience that you can share that content with. And if you don't renew your subscription in the future, you can still use the footage you downloaded. There are three subscription plans based on the quality of footage that you can download. So for just $25 a month, you're able to download their entire library in HD. For $40 a month, you can download it in 4K and 8K. And for $50 a month, you can download it in 4K and 8K in log, or even sometimes raw. The fact that you can download log and raw footage from ArtGrid is one of my favorite things about the platform and is actually kind of relevant to this video because it gives you a lot of flexibility to grade the stock footage however you want and of course to match it to your own footage, which is very important when you're using stock footage. So if you wanna try it out for yourself, make sure to use the link in the description of this video and you can get your first two months completely free. All that being said, let's move on and talk a little bit about grading. And these are a tool that has so many creative applications, some of which we'll be talking about later in this video, but I want to start you out with the basics, which is just using them to darken or lighten a specific part of the frame. A lot of the time for my grading, I like to make the bottom of the frame darker or even the top of the frame lighter in order to create some more contrast and draw the eye 
to the subject in between. To do this, I just add a new Lumetri color effect to the clip, use a mask to isolate it to that part of the frame, then feather that mask way out so the effect is nice and smooth, and then I'll drop either the exposure or the shadows down to darken that part of the frame. And you can see we've created this nice, smooth darkening effect on that particular edge of our shot. And now let's talk about probably the most fun technique, which is adding fake fog into your footage using some actually pretty easy color grading techniques. And once again, a gradient. All you need to do to create some fake fog in your shot is use a new Lumetri color effect on the clip, use a mask to isolate it to a particular part of the frame. Usually I'm masking it to the top part of the frame because that's where fog would realistically be. And then just go over into Lumetri color, reduce the contrast and saturation a ton, maybe adjust the exposure and highlights. And you've got actually a kind of pretty cool looking fake fog effect. I was pretty stoked when I figured out how to do this a few weeks ago. Of course, this works best on clips that are already kind of foggy, like you're not gonna wanna add it to a shot that just doesn't have any fog at all because it probably won't look very good. But it is actually a really useful effect for creating continuity between clips that are shot in a foggy condition because fog kind of moves in and out and it's not very consistent. So you can create some extra continuity or just complement the fog that's already there. And now that the light is starting to hit the mountains behind us, let's talk a little bit about how you can make a sunrise or sunset a little more colorful and punchy in post. And this is something I've used in a few of my videos, particularly when I need sunset footage and I go out to shoot and the sunset or sunrise just doesn't really deliver. And I need to add a little bit of spice to it in post. Now the first approach here might be to just go and adjust like the temperature sliders, add a bit of orange, maybe some magenta in, but you'll usually get a weird kind of washed out artifacty effect throughout your image. For a cleaner and more realistic effect, you can try going down to the color wheels and adding some red or yellow or orange into the highlights of your image. And this will reflect how that light would actually come through during a sunrise or sunset. It's gonna be more noticeable in the brighter parts of the image where there's more sun. Wow, that is like really pretty and dramatic. And what I would typically do is add a mask or gradient like we talked about earlier and use it to isolate that color wheels effect to the sky specifically. And finally, I'm gonna finish this one up really fast because it's raining and I don't want everything to get destroyed. So let's talk about how to completely fill the frame with one color and why you might want to. Typically, I use this technique for footage that I shot at night because at night you don't have like a uniform light source. So you can get a lot of weird, like different colors and artifacts in the image and this can help to really just clean everything up and give it like a really cool kind of futuristic Tron-like vibe. Just completely desaturate the clip, then come down to your RGB curves and add whatever color you want really. Usually I'm adding a bit of blue and taking out some red to add a bit of greenish teal. Some areas may look unnatural and you're gonna wanna add that color back in. So all you can do to fix that is just duplicate that layer onto the layer above it, then use a mask to isolate the part of the frame that you wanna remove the effect from, then just delete that Lumetri color effect and you've isolated that area from the effect. And you can also apply this effect selectively with a mask. I actually used it on this clip pretty recently because I didn't like how kind of patchy the grass was. Like it had a lot of red spots in it and I wanted it to just be completely green. So I used a mask, isolated it, um, animated that mask to follow that particular part of the frame, feathered it out a bit so the effect would be smooth, then I desaturated that area, and then went in and added some green using the color curves, and then we've gotten rid of that effect, and that part of the clip is now completely green and looks very nice. All right, is that, is that it? I think that's it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> and at this point, the good light is kind of over, which is clearly nature's way of telling us that it's time to shut up and end off this video. Thanks again to ArtGrid for sponsoring today's video, and I hope that it, you know, taught you some new techniques to apply to your grading and or gave you a little bit of inspiration and a reminder to have fun with your grading, not just do it pressing buttons, looking at the scopes 100% of the time. So always remember to have a good time and experiment with your craft. Get outside sometime soon, keep creating, and I will see you in the next one.